Sky Force closed beta date announced, Kickstarter strategy game flip flops on payment model, all that and more. I'm Zach Sharps, and this is Free to Play Weekly. Daybreak Game Studios tends to keep coming up in the news. Last time it was layoffs to staff, this time it's related to their superhero MMORPG DC Universe Online. With Amazon Fury Part 2, the latest DLC for DCUO releasing and adding in a new raid that features Hades as a boss, came problems. It appears after the raid was released, it was taken offline. What happened, you might ask? Well, the usual thing, exploits. You could call it a design flaw or a glitch too, but regardless, the raid ended up being taken offline and anyone that obtained item level 101 or 102 gear will have it taken away. This only affects the expert level fight against Hades and the throne of the dead elites, and it's not really that surprising of a move coming from the developers, but do you feel this is fair or should the players keep the gear that some could say they exploited a glitch to gain. With no solid news on new content since December's Goblins and Gnomes expansion, Blizzard's Hearthstone is back in the news. Why you might ask? Well, it seems as though data miners have discovered info on three new card packs titled Molten Core, Ragnaros, and Golden Celebration. Sadly, no images were currently present in the game's client, but the Molten Core card pack seems to be tied to BRM presale, which likely refers to Black Rock Mountain. Since no new content has been announced for Hearthstone in a good while, it wouldn't be that that surprising for Blizzard to have something up their sleeve. Lionhead Studios this week spoke about the payment model for their upcoming 4v1 style game Fable Legends. To quote, open the exciting world of Fable to more players, end quote, Lionhead announced that Fable Legends will be free to play. Just like in other MOBAs, heroes will have a free rotation, which you can spend money on or earn through gameplay to unlock them forever, and on the villain side of things, you can use the free monsters or earn non-native monsters. Also noted was that all quests and story content will be available for free, but there is a catch. The catch is that if you'll be playing Fable Legends on an Xbox One, then you'll need an Xbox Live Gold account, which really isn't free, is it? And PC players, on the other hand, just need to be on Windows 10 in order to play. Overall, it's a great news considering Windows 10 upgrades will be free to those who own Windows 7 and 8, at least for the first year, but considering Fable seems on its last breath, will this be enough to revive it from the dead? I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. Those of you who are hyped for My.com's highly anticipated MMORPG Skyforge got great news this week. What's the news? Well, Skyforge closed beta starts on March 11th. With this announcement comes Founders Pack details as well, which will allow you to access this closed beta event. The Founders Packs for Skyforge range from $19.99 to $69.99, but all three versions do include access to all closed betas, early access to open beta, a badge, a title on the portal, and the ability to transfer your character name from closed beta to open beta. Those are just the rewards given to all the versions, but there are other rewards as well depending on which version you buy, and if you want the sexy exclusive mount, you'll have to purchase the $69.99 version. Will you be picking up a Founders Pack or just waiting out for the open beta like me? It appears as though Bandai Namco is getting into the MOBA game, as this week they announced Supernova. Being developed by Prime Game Studios, Supernova will be a futuristic humans vs. aliens free-for-all game that merges real-time strategy elements with traditional MOBA gameplay, and in Supernova, players will be able to use drops obtained in-game to craft durable boosts for their favorite characters to improve their base stats. During a match, you'll deploy units, working out a synergy between infantry, land, and air units that lend an RTS feel to the game. If you're curious when you might get your hands on it, Supernova's closed alpha event went live this week with a full launch on PCs scheduled for mid-2015. Kickstarter has had high-profile, high-hopes funded games that recently have been taking flack for changes or failing to meet the expectations of gamers who invested in them. A strategy game called Duelist, which doubled its funding goal of $68,000 early last year, seems to be taking flack this time around. Why so? Well, it appears that the game's team lead, Keith Lee, who stated that free-to-play just doesn't fit the game's vision, changed his mind and will be making Duelist free-to-play. This seems like a great move for you guys, right? Well, the original 3,500 backers don't think so, especially after they were promised it was going to be a paid game. Some are calling it a slap to the face, all the way to real bullshit, all while asking for refunds for their investments, 
And in the end, I feel wholeheartedly that if you state something on a Kickstarter page, it should come to fruition. However, I want to see what you guys think. Time for the question of the week. Last week on the show, I asked whether or not adding in a temporary pay to win element would turn you off from a game or not bother you. A user by the name of EGWO Theos13 stated the following. No, it's not acceptable because at first it's going to be temporary game modes and then it's going to be for every game mode. It is going to be like the DLC thing. When they first popped up, many were not so against them, but now they make games just to sell DLCs. Evolve anyone? So no, and please guys, don't support this kind of pay to win tactics. Don't support any kind of pay to win tactics. Thanks for your response, and if you want your comment possibly featured in next week's episode, make sure to leave your comment down below. This week's question is, with another game failing to meet its promises on Kickstarter, do you believe that whatever is stated on a Kickstarter page should be held as a contract to those investors? or should buyers just beware? I'm interested in hearing your guys' thoughts on this because where I stand is it should be held as a legal contract so developers follow through instead of making false promises. But that's just my take. That does it for the news this week, guys. Make sure to head on over to MMOBomb.com for your daily news, editorials, giveaways, and more. Did I mention giveaways? Yeah, you should check out our giveaways page every day. You never know what you might miss. As for myself, my name is Zach Sharp, signing off until next week's free-to-play weekly. I'll catch you guys next time.